When we discussed the Lewis theory of molecular bonding, we mentioned that we couldn't use Lewis structures to come up with molecular structure. To predict the shape or geometry of a molecule, we need to apply what's called the valence shell electron repulsion theory, which is also called VESPER. In this case, electron groups can either be bonds or lone pair electrons, and the theories say that these electron groups repel each other to assume orientations around a central atom to minimize repulsions. So this means that covalent bonds and lone pair electrons on a central atom push each other as far apart as possible to minimize these electron-electron repulsions. And it's really these electron-electron repulsions that determine molecular geometry. So we define molecular geometry and it looks at the orientation of atoms around a central atom. In this case, we're not going to say that we can actually see the lone pair electrons. Molecular geometry is going to be determined by the number of bonds and lone pair electrons attached to the central atom. So this is what we are going to be looking for. And one of the main mistakes that people make is this idea that when we say a group of electrons, a group of electrons can either be a set of lone pair electrons or a single, double, or triple bond. And it is a very common mistake for students to think that a triple bond actually counts as three groups of electrons because there are three sets of electrons, there's three lines inside of there, but that is incorrect. It doesn't matter whether it is single, double, or triple, a bond counts as a single group of electrons. Another thing that we will be mentioning is bond angles, which are also determined by molecular geometry and electron-electron repulsion. And bond angles are just the angles between adjacent atoms. So when a central atom has two groups of electrons, there's really only one case, and that's where both groups of electrons are bonding. When we have this, the molecular geometry is called linear, and a good example of this is the molecule CO2. The central atom has two sets of bonding a group of electrons. The bond angle is 180 degrees, so here the oxygen-carbon-oxygen -oxygen bond angle is 180 degrees, which makes the overall molecule linear. When the central atom has three groups of electrons, and those three groups of electrons are all bonding electrons, the molecular geometry is called trigonal planar. So it's called trigonal because it's shaped like a triangle, and it's called planar because all three of these bonds are in the same plane, so this molecule is basically flat. A good example of this is BF3. In this case, the bond angle between fluorine, boron, and fluorine is 120 degrees. If we still have three groups of electrons, however, if one of those groups of electrons is a set of lone pair electrons, so in this case, our central atom still has three groups of electrons, but only two of them are bonding, and one of them is a lone pair electron. In this case, the molecular geometry is called bent. If we look at how the atoms are arranged, this molecule would look like it is bent. So remember, with molecular geometry, we act like the lone pair electron is not there. So a good example of this is SO2. Our bond angle is going to be 120 degrees, so the oxygen-sulfur-oxygen -oxygen bond angle is going to be 120 degrees. In SO2, the central atom has got two sets of bonding electrons. Remember, it doesn't matter that they're double bonds. This is counted as a single group of electrons. So sulfur has one, two, three groups of electrons, and because one of the groups of electrons is a lone pair electron, the molecular geometry is bent. When we have four groups of electrons, and all four groups of electrons are bonding, the molecular geometry is called tetrahedral. The classic example of this is CH4, which is methane. This is a little difficult to realize that we are looking at a 3D molecule here, and sometimes the angles can be a little difficult to see, but in a truly tetrahedral molecule, the bond angle is 109.5. So here, the hydrogen-carbon-hydrogen -hydrogen bond angle is 109.5, and you have to remember that we are looking at a 3D molecule in a 2D planar page, that these bond angles may not look 109.5, but they are. So if we still have four groups of electrons, and one of the groups of electrons is a set of lone pair electrons, we get a molecular geometry of trigonal pyramidal. It's called trigonal because these atoms are arranged like a triangle, and it's called pyramidal because the center is pulled up. So overall, the arrangement of the atoms looks like a three-sided pyramid. An example of this is ammonia, NH3. So here, the central nitrogen has got three groups of bonding electrons and one set of lone pair electrons. 
So ammonia would have a molecular geometry of trigonal pyramidal. Here the bond angles are slightly less or somewhere less than 109.5 and this has to do in part to the fact that the lone pair electrons push down on the bonds. So the bonds are pinched down. So the hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen bond angle would be somewhere less than 109.5. Here we still have four groups of electrons, but now two of them are bonding and two of them are lone pair electrons. In this case, the molecular geometry is called bent. Water has a molecular geometry of bent, so when we look at the Lewis structure of water, the central oxygen has two groups of bonding electrons and two sets of lone pair electrons. So overall, it has four groups of electrons, but because two of them are lone pair electrons, the molecular geometry is bent. So just like trigonal pyramidal, the bond angle is still less than 109.5. So the hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen bond angle in water is somewhere less than 109.5. And once again, this is because the lone pair electrons push and tighten down this bond angle. When we have five groups of electrons and all five are bonding groups of electrons, we have a molecular geometry of trigonal bipyramidal. The example of this is PCL5. Here, our phosphorus has got five groups of bonding electrons. It's called trigonal bipyramidal because of its distinctive shape. The trigonal part comes from the fact that these three central atoms forming a triangle, and all three of these bonds are on the same plane. It's called bipyramidal because it has a point on either end. So if you take these three atoms and the point, it would make a pyramid on one side. Three sides and a point, it would make a pyramid on the other side. This geometry is a little bit different in that it has actually two different sets of bond angles. The bond angles between the atoms that make the center is 120 degrees, and the bond angles between the point and the central atoms is 90 degrees. In order to ask what the bond angle is, we need to be very specific about which atoms we are discussing. When we have five groups of electrons and four of them are bonding and one is a lone pair electron, we have a molecular geometry called seesaw. Here one of the bonds has been replaced by a set of lone pair electrons. An example of this is SCl4. When we look at the Lewis structure of that, we can see we have four bonds and a set of lone pair electrons. Here our bond angles are still roughly the same. Bond angle for the central atoms are slightly less than 120, and that's because the lone pair electrons push against them. But the bond angles between the point and the central atoms here are still 90 degrees. When the central atom has three bonding and two lone pair electron groups, the molecular geometry is called T-shaped. Here, two of the central bonds have been replaced by sets of lone pair electrons. This leaves the remaining atoms in a definite T formation. An example of this is bromine trifluoride, and you can see the central bromine here has three bonds and two sets of lone pair electrons. So bromine trifluoride would be called T-shaped. Now there's really only two bond angles left, both of which are 90 degrees. Lastly, if we have five groups of electrons, two of which are bonding and three of which are lone pair electrons, we get a molecular geometry of linear again. When we look at this structure, all three of the central bonds have been replaced by lone pair electrons, and all that's left is the atoms on either end. So in effect, this molecule is linear. The bond angle is going to be 180 degrees. Xenon dibromide is an example of this. Xenon dibromide is linear, and when we look at the Lewis structure, the xenon has three sets of lone pair electrons and two sets of bonding electrons. Its molecular geometry would be linear. The bromine, xenon, bromine bond angle would be 180 degrees. With six groups of electrons, you have to realize that this is the maximum amount of electrons that can be allowed to be attached to an atom. That 12 is the maximum, so we can only have six electron groups. If I have six groups of bonding electrons, the molecular geometry is called octahedral. And when we look at the arrangement of atoms, they form an octahedron. Example of this is sulfur hexafluoride. The central sulfur has six sets of bonding electrons and therefore it would have an octahedral molecular geometry. There's only one bond angle between adjacent atoms and that's 90 degrees. It doesn't matter which adjacent atoms that you are discussing. If I have six groups of electrons and five of them are bonding and one of them is a lone pair electron, 
you have a molecular geometry called square pyramidal. So here one of the bonds has been replaced by a lone pair electron and it's called square pyramidal because the four bonds in the center form a square and all the bonds are on the same plane and it's called pyramidal that if we go to the point here it would form a four-sided pyramid. Example of this is bromine pentafluoride. We can see that the central bromine has got five sets of bonding electrons and one set of lone pair electrons. And here the bond angle is almost virtually 90 degrees. However, if we are talking about a bond angle between one of the central atoms and the bottom atom, the bond angle is compressed slightly less than 90 degrees due to the presence of the lone pair electrons. If you have six groups of electrons, four of which are bonding and two of which are lone pair electrons, you get a molecular geometry called square planar. Here we replaced two bonds with lone pair electrons. It's called square planar because the four central atoms form a square, and it's called planar because all of these four bonds are on the same plane. An example of this is xenon tetrafluoride. So you can see the central xenon atom here has four bonds and two sets of lone pair electrons, making its geometry square planar. And now the only bond angle you have between adjacent atoms is 90 degrees. So the bond angle between, between fluorine, xenon, and another fluorine is 90 degrees. Here's a summary of all the molecular geometries. When we go to determine the molecular geometry, the first thing you need to do is count groups of electrons and then determine how many of those electron groups are bonding groups and how many of those groups are lone pair electrons. The combination of the two will tell you which molecular geometry you are dealing with. So you need to have the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure will tell you how many bonding groups the central atom has. And then from that, you can use VSEPR to estimate the molecular geometry.